to collect. Ooh, ooh, those ladybugs biting me. Probably beetles. <laughs> Hi there, Marge here from the Rose Grows in Harlem. It is Saturday, May 25th, and I have a lot to do um, for a reason I won't get into here. I'm going to have to travel to New York a little earlier than planned, and I have to get uh, all of my garden stuff done this weekend. Um, so I just wanted to run quickly through uh, what's gonna happen, and then because the sun is blazing out, um, it may be too hot for the camera so I will record but I'm gonna I'm not gonna talk I'm just gonna do the work and I'll probably speed it up later uh, but I just wanted to give a rundown now before my my camera actually you know uh, burns up <laughs> from the Sun um, I have to trellis my tomatoes they're getting large enough now that it's too big they're they're just falling over and I'll show you what they look like when I get over there um, so in order to do that, I will have to cut back my walking onions because they are going out of control and it's great. Um, but I'm excited about that because I want to throw them along the back fence so that I have walking onions like forever. So I'm very excited about that. Then for the side beds, my cucumbers have finally gotten their little runners. So now I can train them up the trellis and basically you just rub those against the plastic or against the, uh, the pole and they will wrap themselves around that and then hang on to that to grow. So I can do that. And then once I've trained those, I can remove the netting from the top half. Uh, the netting that I have over the entire area is to keep the uh, cats out mostly, but if I just put that halfway, it should be all right, and then the peppers can come through and then the cucumbers can come through there as well. My loofah, I am going to use my greenhouse as a huge arbor-esque like thing, I guess you want to call it, um, but I'm going to put trellis netting all along that greenhouse and then uh, put loofah in grow bags and then slowly train that up that trellis. And then uh, for the watermelon, I want to put all the watermelons in some dirt lockers so that they could, you know, spill over into the ground and then they could use up whatever uh, native soil they'd like. I want to do the same thing for the pumpkins, all in the dirt lockers. Um, and then we have all the companion flowers. We have um, some tansy, my alisums, the lavender, uh, what else do I have, calendula, and some other things. And I wanna put those also in dirt lockers. So I'm gonna walk around and pick a dirt locker. Um, they are perennials. I probably should be planning this out, but I'm not. I'm just gonna put like all the tansy in one dirt locker, all the lavender in another dirt locker, so that I just have pops of color and of the same, you know, type of flower. Because I've never had that, and I think that looks really cool. Um, and then last but not least are the grapes. I have neglected my grapes big time, and I'm really sorry, grapes. But um, if I have time today, if not tomorrow, maybe Monday, because it's holiday, um, I'm gonna make my obelisks, and I'm gonna train the grapes up the obelisks. I was going to do it with a, um, with a stake, uh, I'm sorry, no, there are big logs, they're kind of like fence post logs, um, and I was gonna, you know, uh, bury, in, or I was gonna dig into the ground a few feet, put the, the big post in there, and then let the, maybe make a trellis or, or do something with it. But this ground is really unruly, it's clay, there are a lot of um, uh, runners, uh, what are they called, the, um, Oh, I forget the name. Oh, it's at the tip of my tongue. I'll probably remember in the middle of my tomatoes. <laughs> but it's basically, oh, it starts with an R. Oh, I forget what they're called. But basically, it's like brambles and stuff like that. They go under the, the soil and then they pop up at everywhere. So, um, those are those get in the way of digging and there are roots from trees that get in the way of digging and then there are rocks there's like granite all over the place so um i'm just gonna put up some obelisks they're i believe six feet tall and i'll put up three of them and then i will train the grapes up there so uh let's see how long my phone lasts <laughs> i will make some kind of shelter for it um but i'll take you along first up most important priority one the tomatoes Okay, so right now you see the tomatoes are looking pretty sad because they're being bombarded on one side by the walking onions 
and it rained really hard today so the ones that are really tall like this one is totally flopped over. Three tomatoes. Three tomatoes. So, I will cut most of these onions and get them prepared in the backyard. And I will use these steaks over here and their counterparts to make a trellis grid for the tomatoes. If for whatever reason the camera cuts off, I'll just come back and show you the rest later. <laughs> Quick tip, mark a list with some kind of highlighted color because if this falls, you might not see the white paper, but the highlighted colors you should be able to see. Okay. There are spiders here, so I have to be careful. The tomato smells so good. <laughs> if it looks like this, I'll throw it in the ground because it's these nodules that create new plants. So those will go in the backyard. If it's just this part, I will save that and uh, bring it in the house maybe to let it dry and you can use them like chives or like onions or spring onions. You can also give them away to friends. Oh, look at these, they're huge. I think that's all the ones that have the bulbs. Okay. Over here. Okay, now I'm gonna collect. Ooh, ooh, this ladybug's biting me. Probably beetles. <laughs> but these. I can collect. There's so much water in them. I think these might also be great to like keep the cats away if they don't like onions. Put some, chop some up and put them in my garden. Gives me some room. It's 
to make the trellis. I haven't designed this either, so I just have a generic idea to make a grid. Excuse me, spiders. Pointy side down. <laughs> Okay, I also have these. Let's put these together. Well, you couldn't even see that up there. Oops, sorry. I put that along there. Okay. These little clippy things are really convenient, but I've run out. So I'm going to use some jute and do something that's called a transom knot. I'll do it with this thing on there, um, just to show you what it looks like, because what I have to do is, actually, I will put this on the middle one, and then do it, I just need something to keep it in place. So, I'm gonna take this off, I will put this here on this one, in the middle, down a little bit, so clip it so it's there, and now I could do it here. I will link to the awesome person on YouTube who I learned this from years ago, and if I could find the picture, I will show you my original witchy trellis, which I miss, but I don't have the same I don't have the same types of um, of branches anymore, so okay, so let's see if I remember how to do this properly. Go around here this way, and you make an X. You see that? I'll zoom in a little. Go around this way, and you make an X. Then you go around the back, like this. You go over this one, and through the middle of the X. Now, this is gonna look like a mess because I'm trying to keep it. And then you tie it all together. Now, if you want, you could make an additional not, but that's not going to really go anywhere. If you're unsure, like I do sometimes, I just go around it a few times and just tie a knot. It's jute, it kind of sticks to itself, so it's going to be great no matter what. And I could probably use less jute but and I put it like that so this way if I wanted to take it out I can but that's not gonna go anywhere that's pretty good so I will uh, maybe I'll do it on this one on one adjacent and show you oh 
I'll use this little clip to hold on to one of the branches because something has to hold it up. that hopefully you could see it I cut off about this much dude it's maybe like 14 inches I don't know just enough to make the knot over under over through the X The tomato trellis is done. Any place I didn't have a clip, I used this knot, Tolson knot. Look in the description and I'll link to the video where I learned how to do it. I kept these to keep these parts together, but I left it open at the top to give it some space. I could always tie it with a more jute if I need to, but That's all done. And next, what I'm going to do is there are more than, some of these have more than one tomato. So I am going to make cups or get some vases or something, label them and cut the tomatoes there and see if I can get those to root and then I'll have a brand new plant and leave the other one there. So that's it for today. I'm gonna go feed the cats. Go and get some dinner for myself after I clean up. Thanks for joining along today. <laughs>